Gentlemen of the press, that I should share this occasion. And to be honest, I have been thinking all alone and listening to His Excellency. And I wish that he was here physically. I, I guess one of the reasons why I was called upon to chair this occasion is because of my nature. And I'm trying to see whether I can compromise that or not. And I still find it very difficult. My anxiety of coming for this and chairing this occasion was the topic. The theme of this lecture is insecurity in Nigeria, <clears throat> restoring unity and progress. To be honest, that was what I was expecting that we cover. Fortunately, or maybe unfortunately, the guest speaker concentrated on Benue. In the northeast, we have more problem than what is happening in the ben in Benue. Just yesterday, a local government in Borno North went down. Only God knows the number of people that were killed, and over 1,000 people were displaced to a poor country, Niger. Yesterday, let me quote the 26th American President Theodore Roosevelt. He said this as far back as 1919. He said this country will not be a good place for any of us to live in unless we make it a good place for all of us to live. And I said this before, this was just my mindset that in this country, the bottom line is that if there is no opportunity for son of nobody to become somebody without knowing anybody, there will be no peace in the country. And that is what we are saying. So, my is that insecurity in Nigeria is as a result of injustice. Injustice and inequality. Where there is no equity and justice, there will be no peace. And where there is no law and order, there will be no justice. All these things that His Excellency concentrated on, especially in Benway, is because there is no justice, equity in Benway. And why is this not there? It's because there is partial or total failure in leadership from top to bottom. If you are blaming the top, what of the bottom? Or what of the position you are occupying? All of us here are Nigerians. We kept, we kept on being confused and deceived by tribe, religion, geopolitical zone, and all that. While the leadership are united in terms of misruling this country. They have the Governor's Forum. They have the Elite's Forum. They don't fight in those meetings. They sit down and, and romance one another. And out there, the poor man of Thief, Idoma, and all that are killing themselves. Just last week, 11 soldiers, including an officer, was killed, not by headsmen. They were because of the communal clash, and these gallant soldiers went there to settle them. And up to now, nothing happened. Eleven soldiers. 
if you are to a country like America or other countries that you are copying, the pain will not sleep until they bring out those that are responsible. Well, all we hear is that they will become the government will come after them, we will bring them to justice, and that is it. Let us not deceive ourselves. And this deception is catching up with everybody. He himself, the governor, has become the first victim. If two years ago you are told that the governor will run 1.5 kilometers on his feet in order to escape this problem. And if more governors were chased, this problem would be solved. I'm sorry, sir, because you are listening. And that is me. I say it as it is. It may not be right, but I speak my mind. So, in this country, what we need is leadership. What we need is leadership. And who is responsible for the leadership? It comes back to you people that gather us here, the journalists, because you are the mouth and the ear and the eyes of the public. I, I have one message forwarded to me that I want to share with you on the killing of Benway. And I buy that seriously, and that's why I want to, I want to read it out to, to the journalists here. It affects you. Just a minute, please. Bear with me. Okay, and your chairman is even close by here, so I can, so that you don't say I am the one that concocted it. It was forwarded to me as I received. It said, everywhere is quiet now since the discovery of the bodies of 11 military personnel, including an officer. And by, Mr. by the governor's uh, speech now, that officer is up to the rank of a captain in Benway. The pain of activism, uh, Musa is here, I think. Musa, are you hearing me? Musa of Sanjani. Uh -huh. I'm reading one quote, and I want you to listen. It, say, it says, the pain of activism is dry. The voices of human rights activities is, uh, activists is mute. Perhaps the life of a soldier does, doesn't have any value. Hypocrisy is a disease. If the army decides to give the Zaki Biam or OD treatment now, all hell will break loose. Activists will find their voices and pen again. What? Are, eh? From. Okay, I think it was from a soldier that wrote this. And truly, you can imagine if your brother or sister or son or relate, any relative or even as it is now a Nigerian sacrificed his life, enrolled into the Nigerian army and he was posted from let's say River State to Benway, not to fight but to make peace between communities or communal community that are fighting and then they kill 11 of them their, their, their arrivals were taken away and now it's taken to uh, get into one week and all we hear is that they will be apprehended, prosecuted and uh, justice will prevail. We have had this in so many cases. Just today, if you read in the papers, in Cross River, 11 people in this country were beheaded. Nothing is done about that. I want to call or use this opportunity. Honestly, the reason why I'm just hovering around is because the main topic of this discussion, which is what brought me here, have already been deviated. We are supposed to talk about insecurity in Nigeria and how to restore peace, unity, and progress. And the only way we can do that is when this leadership of governors, presidents, and even legislators are given excuses. are blaming one another. I was in PDP one time, and now I'm in APC. With all due respect, His Excellency was in APC, now he's in PDP and singing PDP song. That is not what we want in this country. We want peace, please. 
we want security, we want welfare. The governors, the leadership, the legislature are not accounting for what they are doing in this country. Instead, they are confusing us with all these talks and they keep on stealing the human resources. And after eight years, you hear a governor is a billionaire, you hear a governor is charged to AFCC for mismanaging eight in the ten trillions. Yesterday, I was in, in, in EFCC to bail one of my colleagues. And I was joking with him. Where will I see these uh, billions so that I can take some and uh, somebody will come and bail me after two weeks? And then that is the story because that is the case in the country. So, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I, as the chairman, I want to apologize. And I think you invited me and made me chairman deliberately. Because you know that I will say what I have said. And I want to apologize if I hurt anybody or including the emotion. But honestly, what I thought we'll come to discuss is insecurity in Nigeria and how to restore peace, unity, and progress. We are more divided than before. And who are doing this? It is not what you are talking about that foreigners are coming in. Yes, if Nigeria today we close our borders and foreigners don't come in.